Alright guys here, yeah, welcome to my next tutorial. Today I quickly want to explain an important concept in uh, information retrieval and that concept is the jacquard coefficient. Now, in information retrieval, uh, there are various techniques uh, for which you can transform your query to be able to match the, the document and return what the user actually wanted from from the copper from the set of document now jacquard coefficients allows us it's a technique that allows for ranking of the retrieved document essentially the background is this you Consider yourself as a user of a system that is the IR system, the information retrieval system. You are going to formulate uh, a sentence of what you are looking for. For example, where, uh, what is the meaning of uh, a particular uh, sentence, or who is the president of so 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 country at so 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 time. Or who is such a so person? So those are queries that you, as a user, you formulate. Now, those sentences that you formulate uh, represent the query, and you type in whatever way into the system. Whether you type it into your system, or you you can do a voice, or uh, uh, a speech. Maybe you yeah, like you just say it uh, into your system your search system no so so now your search system will take your query and uh, try to give you a result and the result that your search system is going to give you is based on what is available to the search system in its corpora a corpora uh, contains all documents that are available for the search system to look in and get you the information that you need. Now, in getting that information, m there might be many documents that actually that your search system thinks is it will be useful or it is a potential answer to your information need. So maybe you have like a thousand document. It might be possible that your search system takes your query and goes into its corpora and say oh, all the thousand documents are useful, are relevant, and return them. Or it might go there out of 1000 and you can say, okay, only 10 or 50 are relevant. Now, if it is just something that is minimal, two or three, that your search system is able to bring out, then you can quickly look at two or three documents and see whether your search system actually meets your expectation or not. But if your search system decides to return 500 documents as being relevant to your answer, then it's most likely impossible for you to want to scroll through all the uh, 500 and start checking one by one. That would be uh, an overkill. So you need a way for your search system to be able to return those 500 but return them in order of priorities so that the first one will be the most relevant to what you are looking for and that is essentially where jacquard coefficient comes into. Now if you look at what I have here. I have SJ1 and SJ2. This is just representing a document. Uh, let me start from here so that uh, it could be clearer. So let me look at uh, this example. Look at this example for instance. Here you have D which represents a query, I mean a document, one of the document in your corpora and you have Q which represent your query. Now in your document you have these following uh, terms, we call them terms, these words, retriever, database, architecture, 
computer text management and uh, information they are all contained in either of this uh, D or this Q so this is what we refer to as your vocabulary now the representation that we have here which is binary says that whenever uh, a term occurs in your document it will be assigned one and whenever a term does not occur in your document it will be given zero similar thing with your query if you write your query if the term computer is not in your query then it will be given zero at that position and if architecture is in your query it will be given one so now what your card coefficient is now saying is essentially your query is just one query but your document will be up to like 1000 or more so how can i take the query and each of the document and do something with that peer and give a value that i can rank just like you do in questionnaire so you're like okay how can i rank this in order so that if i rank it from let's say within the range of zero and one if it returns one then it should be the topmost if it returns something close to zero then it should be the bottom it should be at the bottom it should be uh, at the end of the list of return document so and that is what that is doing so I get back here now so here we have these two document SJ1 and SJ2 like we see in the previous one there are two uh, each of these represent the terms that are in the document so I want to measure this the jacquard coefficient between these two document now here is zero means that the, that particular term on this row, each row, each line of row represents a particular term. It means that that particular term does not occur in SJ1, but it occurs in SJ2. Here, the next term on the next row occurs in SJ1, does not occur in SJ2. Similarly, if you go on here, the next term occurs both in SJ1 and SJ2. Here, it does not occur in any of them. All right, and so we go on like that. Now to measure the jacquard coefficient between these two, the formula for measuring jacquard coefficient, this will be easier for you to, to reason with, uh, is, is this. So what you do is that you get the intersection of the two sets, the intersection of the two sets. In, in the previous one, it will be your the the d and the q here so here it will be the d and the q d and q so you get the intersection of those two uh set and the length of it then you divide by the union of the two uh, so this is what this is saying that is you divide by by the union of the two taking away repetition as you can see so this says that if x and y overlaps then remove the common terms inside uh, x and y so that you will not have double counting here i hope that will be clear so uh, i'm just using this to uh, uh, explain what we have in this place so now here to so now check this jacquard coefficient we look at where do we have in each of the rows where do we have uh, one one now if you have one one that means that particular term occurs in the two places so we count it as one that is an intersection of the term then this is another term look at it this term here this and this we see that uh, of course, in this, uh, in these two places, then we count it as two. All right. So that.
that is why we have these two here. Now, for the uh, union, which is a uh, denominator, we look at the union of all the, the vocabularies, the terms in the vocabularies. And as you can see in this place, you will see that the first term, we have the first term, this first row, we have uh, a one here, which means this is in our vocabulary. The second term, we have the one here, is in our vocabulary too. Here, we have the, the, the third term, which of course, uh, in of them, we just can't just one in our vocabulary duplication. That is three. Here, this does not even occur at all. So this is not included. So this occurs again. This is four, and here this occurs just one. This is five. So that's why we have it's five. I hope uh, this uh, will make uh, a lot of sense and help to understand how the textbook was able to get uh, two over five in this uh, in this explanation. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Uh, if you do like uh, the tutorial, please do give us a thumb up. And uh, if you don't like the tutorial, uh, please do give us a dislike. All this will help us to improve in subsequent uh, tutorials. Thank you.